How you doing? I'm Ernesto Garcia, your Governmental Affairs Communications and Marketing Director for the Greater El Paso Association of Realtors. We're glad you're getting a chance to join us right here as we're getting a chance to speak with the main speaker at this year's Realtor Rally on Friday, September 15th at the El Paso Convention Center, where we're welcoming back Glad he's coming back on the road again, Jared James. Jared, it's great to see you. And it's, it doesn't seem that long ago, but it seems like a lot has changed in a year since we last saw you. And I tell you what, what, how excited are you again for this year's Real Tour Rally? I, I tell you what, man, I just got a little excited because I didn't realize how close it was. You just said the date, and I looked up, and I'm like, holy crap! Like that is like that's right around the corner. Like we're almost there. So you know, it's like that thing where it's like, okay, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, and then and then boom, we're you know not that far out. So uh, you know, the truth is, man, I'm connected with a lot of people there. Um, I always love coming there. Great place to get a sweat when you go for a run. It's nice and hot. Um, people are awesome. Uh, it's a place that I've been to several times over the years. So it's, you know, you can skip a lot of the formalities of taking the first 10, 15 minutes and, you know, making sure everybody likes you, you can just kind of go into the content. And, uh, I always appreciate that. So your guys, your guys place is always a fun one to come to. That's why we keep coming back. Uh, and even more important than it being fun, it's, um, it's a place where they're, they're kind of hungry for that knowledge. You know, they're hungry to get better. Um, and that's always, that's always the best audience to get in front of. Now, a lot has changed since we last seen you in about a year. What are some of the biggest changes you've noticed from where we were last year to what you're going to be presenting this year at Realtor Rally? Oh, my God. I mean, <laughs> what, what hasn't changed, right? Last year, we talked about the coming market shift, and now the market has shifted, right? The, the, on, the only difference is that, you know, we have a lot of Nostradamuses now that are telling you what's going to come in the future. And, and for some people, the sky is falling, and for some people nothing's happening. And for some, there's all these different things that, that, that are going on. And yet what, what I think is important for people to understand is that none of it matters. You know, um, I've gone around for the past year and said, look, you know, my best year ever selling as an agent, because I think a lot of people forget this, but like I was a, a top agent in the country, right? I'm not just somebody who's a real estate coach because I couldn't sell real estate. Um, I was a top agent in the country and, you know, my best year ever was 2008. And for any for any of you real estate historians, that was not a great year. And so, you know, my message to people is, yeah, there's stuff that has changed. There's 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 still low inventory. There was always low inventory. Right. There's still all this speculation. Market's going to crash, which is not happening, guys. Supply and demand. It's just economy 101. When you have the demand we have, that's just not going to happen. Uh, when you've got, you know, 37 percent of people own their homes outright, over 50 percent have over 300,000 in equity. There's not a market crash coming. Um, you know, so when you look at all that, my, my message to people is just, look, there's not a good market or a bad market. There's just the market we're in and what we do with it. And, you know, the whole focus the last year has been on market shift, market shift, market shift. And that's because that's what get eyeballs. You know, the old terms, that's what sells newspapers. But it's the wrong focus. The focus is not on whether the market's shifting or not. We know that. And that's always going to happen. The question is, how are you shifting? Because we're supposed to stay ahead of any kind of shift. We're supposed to always be shifting more than the market we're operating in or the knowledge that our consumer base is, is working in. And so, yeah, a lot's changed, tons changed. Uh, but what hasn't changed, the common denominator is that you and I are still in this industry and it doesn't matter what kind of market we're in. All that matters is what we do with that market. And I really believe that. And that's a lot of what we're going to talk about, you know, when I'm with you guys is don't sit back and worry. Here comes a tornado. You know, don't sit back and, you know, let everybody else get eaten up by that. Winners win. They always do. Um, but it doesn't happen by accident. So we're going to talk about how does that happen? Well, I'll tell you what, there's a lot of new people new to the business. They're getting a chance to come to this free event at Realtor Rally on yeah. September 15th in El Paso. What insights are you going to give to somebody new in this business? Yeah, yeah, that's that's a great question, man. I mean, you know, one of the things I love about new people being in the business um, is they're not jaded. You know, they're, they're not... Um, trying to use the right words, but they're not lazy. They're not, you know, that last market from the last three to five years, that was a fool's gold market. And a lot of people got lazy. They, they thought that what they were doing was good and it was working because they saw results. Um, but sometimes we see results and it's not because of the actions we're taking. It's fool's gold. It's not real. And so, you know, there's been a real focus recently. I, I've talked a long time about, and I say the term and I say visibility trumps ability. But there is another level to that, and that is visibility is our responsibility, right? Um, the person who's an option who's the, is the one who's going to win. And people have a lot more options right now. You know, 68% of people, if you're new in this industry, here's something that should really encourage you. 68% of people 
um, who bought and sold homes in the last 12 months did it with someone who had sold exactly zero to two transactions in the last uh, 12 months. Okay. So think about that. I mean, there's opportunity for new people. The question is, why were they using them? And, and the reason a lot of them are using them is because, you know, the newer people aren't jaded. They listen to people like me and the other people in our industry who have a little bit of a voice <clears throat> about visibility, about creating content, about the type of prospecting you need to be doing, about all of these things that for years agents didn't have to do anymore because if they just ran out there and, you know, were friendly with people and ran their business like a multi-level marketing scheme, talk to your friends and family, they had enough business. And, and now we're in a world where every single person that goes out and raises their hand and says, I'm looking to buy or sell, they've got 12 agents that are reaching out to them. And, and at the end of the day, consumers make decisions based on ease, ease of use. It's why they use Uber over taxi. It's not because it's cheaper, it's because it's easier. And the agents that make themselves easier to be selected, whether they've ever worked with that client before or not, the one that makes themselves easy to be found is the one who's gonna be used. And so I would I would really challenge brand new agents and I would say, hey, from a prospecting perspective, what are the two or three things that you're doing every single day consistently? You know that I say all the time, consistency is undefeated. Sitting back and waiting is not a strategy. What are the two or three things that you are doing every single day? What are those strategies that align with the goals and the vision that you're telling everybody that you want, that you're following every single day? You know, you want to ask yourself those tough questions. The question is not whether you're busy. We're all busy. Everyone's busy. There's a difference between busyness, B-U-S-Y, and business, B-U-S-I. And so if you can discover that now as a brand new agent and you can discover now where your, where your actual power lies with prospecting and what are you good at and how are you good at getting in front of people and get consistent with that, you'll never hurt for business. You know? But if you're going to sit back and wait and wait for the next good market, well, then you're going to have a roller coaster business. You're going to do whatever the market does. And that's not really a business. That's a hobby. Well, I tell you what, one thing I do have to point out is what kind of questions do you want to hear from the people that whether they be experienced or not at this free event that's on Friday, uh, September 15th at the El Paso Convention Center? What questions do you hope the audience brings you? And what do you want to hear from people this time around that you maybe didn't hear last time? You know what, man? I mean, the questions, I mean, look, I get a lot of questions, right? I've got a, I've got a good, I've got a good social following. I tell everybody that I, that I, you know, I answer my DMs, my direct messages and that stuff. And um, the questions that are best to me, when I get the fear questions, you know, or I get the excuse questions, people ask questions that are really excuses or the blaming of their broker or the blaming of, you know, whatever it is. Not that I don't respect those, but they just, they don't hit me the same way. The solution oriented questions are the ones that I love, right? Um, when I get the questions from top agents and they say, hey, you know, the overall market in most areas, you know, number of transactions are down over 20%, but my personal business is down over 20%. Why do you think that is? You know, what's happening here, right? What do I need to do better? When I get people who follow up to the statement that I made a moment ago about specific strategies and they say, what specific strategy should I be following? Can I tell you my favorite questions? Uh, beyond, I'm going to kind of skip the easies, right? When I look at this question, it's kind of like uh, when someone says, you know, why do you do what you do? And they're like, my children. And it's like, duh, we all know that. Now let's, <laughs> let's move on to another duh. Okay. We get that. So at the same time, when someone says, um, you know, what kind of questions there's the obvious, right? There's the obvious about how do I create better infrastructure, better systems, better, all of that stuff. The questions I really love because they show a certain, um, they show a certain amount of intent and, and a certain amount of action are when people will come to me and they will say, Hey, I tried your buyer neighborhood campaign. I tried your new listing campaign. I tried this particular verbiage, whatever it is. And I had bop, 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 whatever, but then this didn't work here or this one responded this way. What's going on with that? Why is that not working? What do I need to adjust? What do I need to, I love questions like that because they're action questions, right? They are, um, I just had somebody post on one of my YouTube clips or maybe it was an Instagram video. And they said, I followed the, forget which campaign it was. And I sent out to this many people. I've done it three times and I've had no response. And, you know, and their, and their question wasn't, or their comment wasn't knew this was bull crap moving on to something else. The question was, Hey, what did I, I did this, 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 where did I go wrong? The assumption was that it worked. Right. And I knew immediately when I looked at it, I'm like, ah, that's what you did wrong. We got it that there it is like we can pinpoint it right just like if you got into a car 
and you get in, you unlock the car, you put your feet in, you shut the door, and then you sit there and you don't just keep hitting the steering wheel. You don't say, well, the car won't turn on. You know, you don't go, well, where's the ignition? Well, there's smart keys now. There's a different way of doing it. They wouldn't say, well, that car sucks. It's not working. They would say, where did I go wrong? How do I turn this car on? The assumption is the car works, right? So yeah. I like it when people come at it, not only from the assumption that something works because we're not selling snake oil here. Like there's a reason why I go all over the world teaching people how to do this is because it works, right? The, the assumption is it works, but then the better part of that question is, hey, I've already tried this. Here's my next level. And, and that fits in line with what I believe, which is, is that it's all just different levels of screw up, like on the way to success. That's how it works. You know, our job is to create more problems, new problems. As we hit different levels, we create new problems and we solve them. We create new problems and we solve them. So my favorite question is when someone says, hey, I'm a student of yours or, I'm, or I follow one of your techniques or I watched one of your videos. I did blank blank. I got this response. I did blank blank. I got nothing. What am I doing? What do I need to adjust? Because that shows me that they're already taking action. And, and most people, let's face it, most people ask questions because they love the sound of their own voice and they have no intention of doing anything that you've talked about. This is just my chance to let me let me get a little FaceTime with him. Let me let me raise my hand in front of everybody. Let me whatever. A follow up actually shows that there's there's been some action and that's somebody that I can deal with. That's someone I want to give time to, if that makes sense. Well, you're going to get your time to speak with a lot of realtors. This is the one time at a free event on Friday, September 15th, El Paso Convention Center, your chance to really get one-on-one -on -one with Jared. See him, come by. It is a great product. I'm looking forward to seeing you, and I'm glad you're getting a travel again, my friend. Anything else you want to say? One last second thing to anybody in El Paso? All the No, real man. Uh, I guess I'd say this. Uh, like I always say, go to connectwithjared.com, connectwithjared.com, uh, you know, uh, uh, connect on all the social channels, guys. Send me questions, like literally, especially now that I'm heading into the um, – uh, you know, the real travel part of my schedule. I'll be answering a lot of questions, putting up a lot of content on the road. Be, I'll be on airplanes, you know, d uh, DMing people, direct messaging people. So take advantage of that. I want to help as many of you as we possibly can. And then last but not least, like every year, I hope we'll see a lot of you in October at the Jared James Advance in Nashville. Uh, it's just jaredjamestoday.com forward slash advance. We're going to have amazing two days. I think it's more relevant than ever. Education is more relevant than ever. Um, we're in a pros market right now, guys, and, and pros are going to win over amateurs and you're going to have a lot of people who are going to fall off and they're just going to sit back and watch their business go away. Um, but this market was made for pros and pros have skills. They know what to say. They don't buy into this nonsense that we're not salespeople. We're matchmakers. You know, they understand that being a salesperson is not a bad thing. It's a good thing when you have the right intent, when you have the right motive but you're dealing with people during their third most stressful time in their life. And they need a pro with them. That's going to help them make a good decision and do the right things at a time when they're emotionally, you know, uh, uh, not all there, you know, they're, they're, they're feeling a lot of different ways during this process. They need a pro by them. Okay. So can't wait to be with you guys. I love you guys. We're going to have a good time. Bring a friend, bring your office, make sure nobody misses out. It's going to be a good time. If you go to Nashville, he'll teach you the two-step and you can't make it to Nashville. Don't worry. We'll see you here on Friday, September 15th at the El Paso Convention Center. Get all the details online at elpasotx.com.